Good afternoon, everybody. We are absolutely thrilled to have you all join us today to listen to the youth of San Diego to tell us about how to broaden participation in computer science in local high schools here in our region. Um, I'm from UC San Diego CREATE. My name is Susan Yonezawa. I'm the associate director there. And I will be joined with some of my colleagues to help you through this two-hour learning experience, along with many of our students and teachers who've been our collaborators. Um, these are challenging times, and so we really appreciate you spending a couple of hours this afternoon with us um, to learn with us and to learn with the youth of San Diego. If anything, we've learned this year the importance of perseverance and the, the importance of community engagement, um, especially in education. You know, the history of education has been a history of doing things to people, supposedly for their own good. And often those people are young people, people that adults believe need to have environments shaped for them as opposed to being active agents in shaping those environments for themselves. But what we've learned through the CS Listen Project and what the students have taught us is that we don't have to mimic that kind of history of education reform um, over and over again. We can engage the youth of today to help us understand how to make schools more impactful places for them. In particular, my um, colleagues, the CS Listen UC San Diego team involves myself, but also my colleague, Beth Simon, who you're gonna hear from during this video, um, Kirk Rogers, a fantastic graduate student and PhD student in education studies and a former middle school STEM teacher himself. And, and Min Mai, who is both a doctoral student at the University of Wisconsin-Madison at works at CREATE also as the co.org program manager and just an all around fabulous colleague. So the four of us have had the pleasure of working on the CS Listen Project, which is a National Science Foundation funded award from the CS for All grants um, in this research practitioner partnership. And we have had fabulous colleagues from four districts in particular, Vista Unified School District, the Sweetwater Union High School District, the San Diego Unified School District, and the Escondido Union High School District. This is a really challenging time for K-12 and also for the university system. And I think it speaks volumes for this project and for our colleagues that they have stayed with this project throughout the pandemic. We did start it a year ago and have continued on and seen it through to today. And you're gonna see the quality of the work that they've produced, which has been fantastic. A researcher practitioner partnership is really about making change on the ground. It has to be something that's informed by theory and research, but it also has to make change happen within systems and institutions that presently don't always work for all communities and populations. That's what this project, the CS Listen Project is about. And that is what the projects funded by the National Science Foundation for our PPs, what they're called, um, are really about as well. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the problem that we're trying to tackle as a researcher practitioner partnership. As many of you may already be well aware, computer science is not a diverse set of coursework or pathways, either in K-12, certainly not in the, in the universities, including in our own university, and definitely not in industry. One of the major problems that we've had is that not enough schools offer computer science. And in the state of California, um, only about half of the, of the districts and, and less than half of the schools offer computer science presently as of 2019. Our colleagues at the Kapoor Center have helped us understand that, and even when 50 to 60% of schools are able to offer computer science or districts are able to offer it, only 3% of students who could be enrolled in computer science are actually enrolled in computer science in the state of California. So those are numbers that we collectively are trying to change. Gender is a major issue. And you're gonna hear from that from our student um, co-research teams today. Um, our overall enrollment is about 50% female as we would expect in the state of California. But our CS enrollment, even when the 3% of students take CS, 
only about 29% or less than a third are female students in our own state. And we need to fix that. And finally, race and ethnicity numbers don't look that much better. We are really troubled by the fact that we don't have enough students who are minoritized, African-American, Black, Latinx students, as well as Native American students enrolling in computer science at rates comparable to their white and Asian peers. And that is also an issue that our CS Listen Up student co-research teams today try to tackle. So solving the diversity problem is really, it is a problem that really begins in K-12. And our wonderful partners at the districts and our teachers at the schools, as well as the students you'll hear from, you'll, you'll hear from later, are well aware that if we can solve this problem in K-12, we really are much more likely to solve it later on at the university level and in the workforce. We know for a fact that when students take, when female students in particular take computer science in high school, they're 10 times more likely to major in it. And when black and Latinx students take computer science in high school, they are seven times more likely to major in it and then pursue careers in industry as well. So we can really solve this problem. We've been working on this for a decade. <laughs> um, my colleague, Beth Simon, who you'll hear from next, was really one of, was one of the major players in a COMPASS grant um, funded by the National Science Foundation, which really, where she worked with colleagues both at our San Diego Supercomputer Center on our campus and our colleagues at San Diego State to train the very first cadre of high school computer science teachers here in San Diego County a decade ago. From there, leadership emerged among teachers and we've, we collectively wrote for a second grant, me included, um, which we, called CS Cave. And we worked on that grant for five years, culminating this year, where we were trying to create a village of CS educators. And we are very proud that one of those villages is now the, um, the CSTA, the Computer Science Teachers Association for San Diego, which is a very robust and well-recognized nationally chapter among CSTA chapters across the country. This grant you're gonna hear about is CS Listen. And the rest of today is gonna to be about CS Listen and us how we can listen to students to help us learn to create diverse computer science classes in our high schools. Beth, take it away. All right, thanks everyone. My name is Dr. Beth Simon and I'm a faculty member in the education studies department at UC San Diego, where our goal is to transform education in a diverse society. In CS Listen, we were working with and learning and inquiring with students through equity networks. So what did that actually look like? Well, the first thing we did is we had uh, worked with our teacher uh, leaders to help recruit and identify diverse groups of students at their school with a big focus on students who had not ever taken computer science courses. Those groups then came to UC San Diego where we were hosted by the Computer Science and Engineering Department to help educate these students in understanding the problem of the lack of diversity and representation, both in the computer science field and then also in computer science classes in K-12 and particularly at their own schools. After that get together, we then worked with each team at their school and we discussed research questions and the students through a multi-week process, identified a research question that they wanted to study about equity, access, and representation in computer science in their own school. Then we determined the various research methods that they could use um, to identify the data that they were interested in. Perhaps it would be surveys, maybe it would be interviews, maybe something else. Finally, then, then the students would design tools where that would allow them to get the data that they were looking for. They collected that data. And just as we were starting to conduct our analysis, it was the end of March and everything went pear-shaped and we put a hold on things. But we have come back and that's where we are today. We're so excited and the students are so excited to be able to present to you the findings from their analysis here at our CS Listen Up conference. 
But what happens next is really important. And in fact, will be the focus of our last 30 minutes together today. And that is what's coming up next is a series of educators action cycles. And this is where educators, administrators, and even some of the students themselves will engage in activities based on the recommendations of our student co-research teams to make change in their school in some way to make access and engagement with computer science more equitable across their school. These are our fabulous schools that we've had such a great time working with over the last year. We have San Pasquale High School, Castle Park High School, Escondido High School, Hoover High School, Orange Glen High School, Morse High School, Mission Vista High School, Rancho Buena Vista High School, and Sweetwater High School. Next, we wanna show you a little bit of what it was actually like working with students at the schools through this video. every day and working towards a problem that we may actually make a difference with in our school. What we're doing is we're exposing computer science to underrepresented groups. Currently the world is undergoing a technological surge and so having people involved in this field would be beneficial to society overall. In this project we are learning teamwork, leadership skills, productiveness, and we also are able to learn how to do surveys. I like the fact that we're working towards diversifying the computer science field because as a school we have a lot of minorities here and I just want them to be represented more in that field. We're learning about the different demographics of people who do and do not take computer science and the genders that do or do not. And we looked at the data of who did take computer science, the demographics that are in our school, and the genders, and we noticed that those are really similar for the demographics and races. But the only thing that was off was the genders. We had a larger portion of males taking computer science rather than females. So that's what we learned. We learned that females don't take computer science as much as males do. It's like really difficult to actually get an amount of data to figure out why people don't take computer science courses at our school because we need to figure out what their other interests are and how we can encourage them to take more computer science classes. project is basically a lot of analyzation and that is a skill that I feel would benefit me a lot and not only am I learning more about computer science, I'm learning more about other people's reasoning and view on it. I feel like it's important to broaden participation in computer science because you need different kinds of perspectives in everything. And what I find exciting about TS Listen is working together with everyone in order to help spread awareness about computer science and its importance in our daily life. What I'm learning is how to create research questions how to create surveys and what people in my school think about computer science. So far with our research, I've learned that it's not the exposure of these computer science programs, it's rather the stereotypes that these different ethnicities and groups are being put in. They're not really given the choice themselves to explore. For me personally, the best outcome to come from this project would be having more Hispanic females in our classes. We need to bring awareness to the lack of diversity in computer science. People with different backgrounds have different perspectives on different things which will lead to increased innovation. My team's research question is how can we expose computer science to underrepresented groups and lessen the stigmas around the topic? How can we encourage female students here at MBHS to join the computer science program? What factors heavily affect the number of students taking computer science orange blood? Why are Hispanic girls not taking computer science? 
How can the spread of accurate information lead to a more diverse computer science class? How would computer science differ if we apply interactive approaches and if the internet was available to all students across Hoover? Why is computer science not talked about? We're so glad to have had the opportunity to capture those images, videos, and voices from the students so that even though we can't be sharing together live with you today, you have some idea of what things were like during their work on this project. But as we know, I mentioned at the end of March, like everybody else, we had to stop and pivot. And we chose to take a pause and recognizing that everybody was dealing with very, very difficult issues Etc. So we put a pause on our analysis of our data at that point, and then we restarted when schools came back into session late this fall. Next, we're so excited to share with you and have go out into different sessions based on school districts to hear the results from our students and to have some discussion with them around what they found. But before we go, we must give great thanks to our four district, well, excuse me, five district coordinators who not only served as helping us write this grant, but who are people we have worked with over the past 10 years and who have just been immense leaders and supporters in their districts as we work to get more traction with computer science in our schools. So Mia Funk and Escondido, Lance Larson and Shirley Miranda at San Diego Unified, Art Lopez at Sweetwater Union and Kelly Fleming at Vista. And super important is to acknowledge our teacher leaders who really did a huge amount of work and led the efforts at their schools. In Escondido, we had Aaron Duran, May Coaching, Deanna Barron. At San Diego Unified, we had Jack Wetzel, Kim Morris, and Lourdes Sanchez. In Sweetwater, Art Lopez, Samantha Silvis, Dan Pearson, and in Vista, Aaron Keeping, Jeffy, and Joystrom. So, Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you're inspired and interested in hearing what students have to say. Next, we're gonna show you a little bit about the interface of our Hopin conference environment we're using today and give you directions on what you need to click on next to join in to your favorite district's report. Here we have the main page for our Hopin CS Listen Up conference. Uh, this is where you came in at the beginning, at the reception. I'll point out over on the right, if you want to chat us or chat to each other, you can chat here. We'll be offering up some polls here, and you can see what people are around here. If you want to get that out of the way, you can do that. Right now, you're in the main stage. Over here on the left uh, is the stage icon, and you should be seeing this in the main window. Next, you can scroll down, if you go up to reception, and see what's coming up next. We have sessions that last until the entire rest of the conference for our four districts, Vista Unified, Sweetwater Union, Escondido, and San Diego Unified. If you are a representative or a student from the district, we'd ask you to go to that session. However, you can in fact switch between sessions all you want. Those presentations will uh, last until 5.30 with the last half hour saved for discussions about next steps. At, in the last half hour, if you're interested, you can go to a session on uh, college applications, on community college pathways is computer science, to meet uh, Latino women, the Tecnolo Chicas in computer science, or to learn about cybersecurity. To get to a session, click over here on the left, and you will see the various sessions that are available. Here we have Escondido Union, San Diego Unified, Sweetwater Vista, and then here's our four sessions that will start at 5.30. So at this time, if you have any questions, go to the reception and type them into the chat. Otherwise, please go to the sessions icon and choose one of these four sessions to go and hear our teams report out on the research they did this year. Thanks very much.